Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our asynchronous lecture on the art therapy modalities that we've been studying. I'll demonstrate uh, two examples of uh, projects for the major uh, final assignment of well-being uh, modalities. And uh, last week, we talked quite a bit about options A and B. Uh, today, I'll demonstrate option C. Uh, and one of the examples will actually have a uh, an essay component. Um, and I'll show you um, uh, also the citations. Um, behind me, you see my cat grooming himself. But uh, he's doing that in front of the painting, which I'll be discussing, um, which I painted a while back. And I used as an inspiration for this uh, particular lesson. So I'm going to share a screen and begin by talking about the uh, um, option C, which is where you choose to do an art um, modality uh, that allows you to express yourself through some therapeutic art activity. Um, so the first example I'll give you is of uh, painting and uh, the research that I've done on post-impressionism and how this can teach us something about uh, self-expression and uh, healing kind of uh, self-reflection. The second example will be a compressed little lecture on uh, symbolism and how we can think through our mental states through symbols and express um, artistically uh, how we are feeling and what we are uh, grappling with uh, emotionally. So uh, just as a side note, I also um, uh, posted uh, five different resources for your research purposes uh, in case you're struggling to find resources on a particular topic. Um, and uh, so these um, are under announcements and uh, there are uh, connections to the proposals that I've graded so far. So for example, a number of you are doing artistic projects option C. So there's the Canadian Art Therapy Association journal that you can look at and it contains, um, uh, uh, actually it's accessed, yeah, through the Seneca Library account. So it's a database of art therapy techniques. Uh, the second one is art and music therapy for trauma survivors. Um, so looking at um, music uh, in particular, if you're interested in that, some of you are. Um, the third one is another one on art therapy exercises. This one includes uh, discussions of the kind of things that we've done, including the mandala work. Um, and then the fourth one is a website uh, companion to the book we read as our first resource for this course, The Artist's Way. Um, and then finally, those of you who are choosing option B, there is the Journal of Med uh, Medicinal Food. Um, and so next week we'll have a live class and we can talk further about your projects. But today I'm here to give you um, two examples of something that um, I've uh, come up with um, and something that I hope helps you to think about the uh, different ways of approaching your write-up um, for one of the three options, specifically the third option this week is what I'm discussing. So I'm going to start by petting Hero and saying he's a good boy. Yeah, yes, you are. You're a good cat. Um, here's a painting. Uh, it's a reproduction of um, Paul Gauguin's um, Tahitian landscape painted in 1891. So um, this was painted or I reproduced this in 2008, which is when I was finishing my undergraduate degree. And so I wrote uh, a reflection first on how that painting came to be and then how it inspired me to paint something else. Um, and so I'd like to read this out loud to you uh, just to give you a sense of the kind of reflection that you can engage in uh, if you're doing option C and you're creating some artwork. Um, it doesn't have to be painting. It could be any of the other uh, modalities we talked about. But essentially, um, here's an example of a reflection just to give you a sense of the kinds of ideas and details you might be interested in exploring. So... 
as I said, <clears throat> when I was a student in the English and professional writing program, I experienced a period of sadness that turned me painfully introverted. Once I did not leave my room for nearly 72 hours and only drank water. At the time, my father was given an art set. He did not use it, so I began to channel my sadness into painting. I reproduced Paul Gauguin's Tahitian landscape. I found sol solace in the green tones that dominate the bottom of the canvas. So um, uh, it has an interesting color palette. It's quite diverse, but I found the green of the fields and the blue of the sky and the um, uh, contrasting shades of the mountains and the trees to be quite pleasant. And so I think that's why I chose it. But then as time went on, um, I realized I chose not to paint um, the human figure that appears in Gauguin's version. Uh, that's the starry night. That's not it here. So this is the original painting. It has a human, um, I think a male figure, most likely carrying some things, some sacks of some sort. Um, and um, so I chose not to depict the human in the painting. So uh, I think I chose that um, upon reflection, not so much out of laziness in finishing the painting perfectly, but I was disappointed at the time with humanity. I was mourning the loss of innocent belief that one's parents always uh, whoops, that should say, always wish, it's a typo, wish you well. Um, I was uh, feeling really quite sad, as I said, and I, it was a period of, um, I guess, coming of age and realizing that um, adulthood um, brings uh, many opportunities of um, not understanding other humans' behaviors and uh you know, finding the path towards coping with that is what really um, this is about. So Gauguin's painting, as I learned later on, was inspired by his trip to Tahiti, a trip where he sought, quote, to escape European civilization, which he felt was artificial and spiritually bankrupt. And it was painted in a post-impressionist style, so in researching the movement that was termed post-impressionism, I learned that Gauguin was one of the four major painters who worked against Parisian painters such as Claude Monet, who were impressionists. The earlier works were executed in smaller brush strokes, as in Monet's paintings of water lilies, which you can look up, but I think it's quite famous. You might know what those look like. And yeah, those um, uh, paintings uh, live still in Paris. They, I, I've seen them in Paris and I was fascinated by them, but um, I would say I was never drawn to trying to recreate that work. Um, as you know, I'm um, quite drawn to Kandinsky's work, which is more abstract, um, but it is Gauguin's work that I think really uh, caught my attention and drew me to this post-impressionist um, desire to do something a little bit different from the original Impressionist movement. So um, later uh, painters, uh, so Gauguin, but also Vincent van Gogh, developed um, this theme uh, as in, in the example of the iconic Starry Night, um, which again, probably you all know, but if you look at the brushwork, um, and the way that the colors um, are used in, I wouldn't call it flat, but it's a little bit more cartoonish, right, than uh, what usually Impressionist paintings look like. Um, and so, uh, in a sense, to, whoops, to some extent, I was really drawn to that, and I wondered why. So, um, According to critics, what Gauguin's work values is less emphasis on the accuracy of light. Um, so depicting, you know, the, the way that objects reflect light in a more realistic way, and instead, quote, an interest in expressing their emotional and psychological responses to the world through bold colors and expressive, often symbolic images. I became fascinated by the idea that works of other post-impressionists 
painters, such as Paul Cezanne, for example, moved in the direction of materializing their emotional states in a way that isn't so concerned with objectivity, but rather with the pouring out of one's subjective relationship with the world they depict, it should say, they depict. Um, these reflections made me want to paint something in a way that helps me to embody the state of mind, the subjective exploration of how the objects I'm painting reflect my psychological states and the flow of emotions that wash over me when I enjoy the work of intricate brushwork. For this purpose, I painted an image of a scene from my memory of the first time I visited Ottawa City with my now husband. We walked around an art ex uh, exhibition and found ourselves mesmerized by a painting of purple and yellow flowers. Its price was several thousand dollars. As a young couple, we could not afford it. But we took down the name of the painter, Valerie Butters, and vowed one day to purchase one of her paintings. The memory of childlike excitement is reflected in the painting. It lacks depth of shades. The characters in the center are cartoonish, but I cherish this painting for allowing me to capture the naivete and joy I embodied back then. So here's the painting. Um, and it's something that, again, I think was in this instance, a more joyful work than the reproduction of the Gauguin when I think I was quite sad and didn't feel like interacting with humans. Um, this one was, you know, something that um, was inspired by happy moment, happy moments of um, being with someone you care about and want to talk to for hours on end. And so, again, this idea that um, you can take a moment of a memory or you can even reproduce somebody else's artwork, but uh, work through the uh, manual uh, expression of your emotions on canvas, not caring so much about the realistic um qualities of, of the uh, finished product, essentially. So to go back to the beginning of my reflection, this idea that uh, people like uh, uh, Paul Gauguin were interested in using their subjective emotional state and working with symbolic images. Um, I want to show you another example. So this would be, you know, you create a painting, option C, and then you write at least a 500 word reflection. Mine is, let's see, without the work cited, 510 words. I have the uh, two sources where I found information on uh, the Tahitian landscape painting and the uh, critics' uh, explana explanation of post-impressionism. And so, uh, you know, this is what is the minimum requirement for uh, your final major project if you are choosing to create some kind of artwork and then reflecting on it, writing 500 words and having at least two sources for where, you know, you thought about the reflection in a way that reaches out to the world to other people's thoughts on the type of artwork that you're creating. And then next, so I'm going to stop sharing. The um, second example I'd like to show you um, connects us back to some of the psychoanalytic theories we looked at with Sigmund Freud and Jacques Lacan and uh, Donald Winnicott. Um, we didn't study anything from uh, Carl Jung, but Jung was a colleague of uh, Sigmund Freud's. They had a fight and they stopped working together. But Jung was very much interested in symbols and archetypes. And um, uh, he tried to explain, you know, the tendencies we have psychologically because of these kind of type um, thinking archetypes, you know, um, uh, from anything from dark associated with evil or light associated with good, right? Or that we have uh, many humans have inherent fears of spiders or snakes or rats, um, that these are ideas uh, that come from our ancestry, that uh, we are not fully in control of the fact that we react viscerally, bodily to some elements in the world. Um, so here's an example of another um, 
aesthetic modality, you can create a symbolic sketch. And uh, so again, this is, uh, I call it examples of art therapy, a search for new ways of self-expression. Um, Jung wrote that um, we use language in a way that um, uses symbols, but uh, for example, a, an abbreviation such as UN or UNICEF or UNESCO, that these are meaningless in themselves. It's just that they're acronyms that you know carry the meaning of what society ascribed to it. Um, in contrast to that, we have uh, symbols that uh, whether it's a word or a picture, um, they have a connotation that's much larger. It's much more open. Um, and so, you know, some typical, very um, uh, typical, stereotypical symbols of love that are cross-cultural. You see the images on the screen. Um, you know, uh, they, they are used in different contexts uh, slightly differently, and that the symbols that we find meaningful or special to us, uh, in essence, we need to pay attention to because that speaks to something about our personality. So um, the activity I'm going to describe in a moment, I just want to quote uh, Jung one more time, he writes, one might after a visit to England conclude that the English worship animals because uh, you would find uh, eagles, lions, and oxen in old churches. But what one would not be aware of, uh, nor are many Christians, that these animals are symbols of the evangelists and are derived from the vision of Ezekiel. Um, and that this in turn has an analogy to the Egyptian sun, God, Horus, and his four sons. There are moreover such objects as the wheel and the cross that are known all over the world, yet that have a symbolic significance under certain conditions. In other words, the wheel can have many different meanings in different cultures and that it's a symbol, but it's not um, singular, right? That there's multiplicity of meanings. And so precisely what they symbolize is still a matter of uh, or f matter for controversial speculation. Uh, you know, one really controversial example would be the swastika, which was which comes from Hinduism and was a symbol of something good, but was uh, appropriated uh, by the Nazis, right? So um, uh, the first step um, that this exercise, this art therapy exercise asks you to do is to brainstorm two or three animals that have significance in your life. At least one should be an animal from your dreams, for example, something you know that you've seen in your dream world more than once. And at least maybe one exotic animal, something that is not domesticated and common. And then you can add some other symbols, the symbols that are cultural signs, something for your, from your own culture, for example, something like a cross or a star or the yin yang symbol, etc. So, um, in order to uh, select your symbols, what you can do is you can journal, as we learned, right? You can just sit down and do some free writing and think about the kinds of things that come to your conscious mind and dig a little deeper down into why or from where it's coming from. And then you start to reflect what these symbols tell you about your individuality uh, or your presence or lack of wholeness that you feel. So remember we talked about um, Lacan's concept of the ideal eye and how we want to fill in that uh, gap or that emptiness with objects of desire that desire works because we feel a lack for something. And so we chase all these desires and try to acquire things. And so once you've done this reflection and you've chosen some symbols that you want to work with, then the next thing that you can do uh, is sketch or create a design using other people's artwork that contains at least two to three symbols of significance to your understanding of yourself um, the artistic part of the work should help you to also continue to think carefully through why these symbols are significant to you so that then you can write a reflection.
right? So I'll just show you an example. Um, there's a panther there, uh, an animal that I've chosen, um, and the uh, other image above it, uh, again, these are actually both taken from the internet. I did not have time to sketch them myself this time, but the tree um, of life uh, image, it, it's a symbol of obviously life, but also um, it has many different details here, including the fact that the life of the tree is below ground, right? That the roots are so important and are just as large as the tree typically. Um, so as below so above um, and then there are wolves also on each side of the trunk again so the second animal is one of uh, wilderness one of um, you know pre-domestication you can say so I can talk about the fact that I have great love and fondness for dogs but that I really admire the wild ancestry of these animals um, and then the black panther represents the dark, wild, often unruly side of my psyche, that there is, um, you know, room for reflection about the aggression that we all have down beneath in our psyche, but that culture helps us to um, overcome. And so then the third symbol you see on the very right hand side is the Unalome symbol, which some of you may have noticed I tattooed on my forearm. Um, and this uh, symbol essentially represents uh, the yogic path, the enlightenment, the highest goal of life, that, you know, the twists and turns of life will take you into directions that you might not anticipate. But if you practice the Ashtanga method, or if you practice other uh, forms of dif discipline, and physical um, uh, training or practice and also breathing techniques and also meditation that you can overcome some of the, you know, um, wild, um, violent side that perhaps this Black Panther represents in the sketch. So then what you would do is write 500 words of a reflection on the sketch and just explore the way that you... Um, have arrived at these images for your own self-discovery. And finally, as I promised, um, the citation. Um, expectation is that you use either MLA or APA, it does not matter for me. Um, and uh, here are the sources that I listed in MLA uh, format. Um, as I've mentioned before, there is such a website called uh, uh, citation machine which you can use um, the citation machine um, allows you to take for example something like this website where I looked up the meaning of post um, impressionism and when you go to the citation machine you can say okay I'm gonna cite a website a book a journal and enter the information, usually the title or the URL of whatever it is that you're citing. You click search and it finds it for you. Then you have to look carefully um, if any of the information is missing in because this is still a robot and, um, you know, despite good algorithms, it could be um, not um, completely correct in its citation. Um, and so it says that, for instance, in this case, the publisher is uh, missing and the date published is missing. And I looked up already previously uh, that I um, cannot find the date exactly when it's published. It says that it's been updated in 2023, but the publisher is the name of the website, right? It's the uh, Museum of Modern Art, so I can add that myself, as you can see shortly, because it's a free service, so it is not particularly fast. Um, so Post-Impressionism MoMA is the name of the article. We don't have an author, but we have the website titled the Museum of Modern Art. Um, date accessed would be entered for you, again, based on algorithms. I don't know exactly when it was published, so I'm going to click complete citation. And 
there it is. And I will copy the citation. Yes, there's still some missing information, but if you really can't find it, I will not, uh, you know, accuse you of not being able to find something that's not there, right? So um, for the purposes of your reflection, um, you can use the citation machine. Um, if you know how to refer to um, uh, other guidelines, for example, the Owl of Purdue, I will post this for you, has its own resource on that. Seneca College has its own resource, which I've shared before. So use what you're familiar with in order to create your citations. Um, as I said, for option C and option B, uh, the minimum requirement uh, is 500 words of the reflection. For option A, the uh, essay, just the pure academic essay, it's a thousand words. And for any of them, minimum two citations of credible sources, which means no Wikipedia, please. Um, and I would avoid avoid other um, uh, encyclopedias such as Britannica or um, popular, not properly, reviewed websites like very well mind you know those psychology pop websites i would avoid those um other than that i posted five different resources which i approve under announcements which you can use for your research um so i hope that this is helpful for you to continue to work on your final project i'll be marking the rest of the proposals over the next uh, 48 hours so you'll get my feedback on it um, and then next week when we meet, we can discuss your projects in person. So I thank you very much for your attention and for your understanding. And um, I will see you next week. Have a productive uh, and also mentally good, strong week. Take care.